Hey everybody, I hope your day was blessed today. Thanks for joining me. We're going to jump into the word uh, in a minute. First, I, I just have one announcement and that is um, I'm excited because the ministry provided food, Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving food to 112 families, 112 families. So we're excited about that. Um, and uh, so we were able to uh, help them out. And uh, matter of fact, they got food probably before some of us. I bought a couple things, but I still have to buy uh, other things for Thanksgiving. But anyway, so we're excited about that. Thank you to those of you who uh, sowed that you gave money towards that uh, so we could do that and, and bless people. Amen. In our in our area. Praise God. Well, I'm going to this should be the last um, few minutes that I spend on this topic um, and I entitled it. I entitled it, could this be why you're not receiving what you're believing for? So uh, now, of course, this isn't um, comprehensive, uh, but it I think it is some things that I've shared, some things that could be helpful to you uh, as you're believing God for different things in your life. Amen? Because that's what we are. We're believers. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this time. In your word, Father, we uh, pray that you would bless this time, uh, that you would uh, give us understanding, Lord, that we could uh, learn how to use our faith and access the things of God because we access your blessings. We access the good things that you've provided for us through faith in you and in your word. So we just thank you for this time together. Holy Spirit, help me. Whatever you need to, I'm open for your help. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So could this or that be why we're not receiving what we believe in for? Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse um, verse 23. And uh, I'm going to start at 19. I just wanted to, do, you know, just to fill in some things. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, starting verse 19. Therefore, brethren, since we have full freedom and confidence to enter into the Holy of Holies by the power and virtue in the blood of Jesus, by this fresh, new, and living way which we in, he initiated and dedicated and opened for us through the separating curtain, the veil of the Holy of Holies, that is through his flesh, and since we have such a great and wonderful and noble priest who rules over the house of God, let us all come forward and draw near with true, honest, and sincere hearts in unqualified assurance and absolute conviction engendered by faith, by that leaning of the entire human personality. Listen to that. That's what faith is. By leaning... Uh, by the leaning of our entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness, having our hearts sprinkled and purified from a guilty, evil conscience. And um, did I add something there? And our bodies cleansed with pure water. Verse 23 this is what we're focusing on. So let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering the hope we cherish and confess and, and our acknowledgement of it. For he who promised is reliable, sure, and faithful to his word. Amen. So we see here one of the reasons, it could be one of the reasons that we're not receiving what we've been believing God for is because we haven't really received. Now, we talked about the word receive last week. The word receive, um, uh, and I referenced Mark eleven twenty four, 24, uh, when we believe that we receive, that word receive, it's, it's, a, uh, it's an aggressive word. That word receive, it actually means to take. When, if we uh, believe 
if we believe, if we have faith and trust in, assurance in, uh, that we take the things that we've prayed for, that we take the scriptures, that we take what God has shown us and promised us in his word, uh, to, so to receive it, we, we take it. We take it into our possession. So the reason, one of the reasons why we're not receiving, we haven't received what we've believe, been believing God for is because we have not taken it. That, now that it says here, it says to take hold. The King James Version says, um, or let us hold fast the confession. Now in the King James, this is New King James, but in the King James it says, let us hold fast and we had looked at how hold fast, you can't hold fast to something that you don't have possession of, right? So, so that would be an issue. That would be a problem. We're not, as believers, we are not called to be a wishing and a hoping for things. Faith is based on, uh, Hebrews 11, 1 says, now faith is what the substance of, of things hoped for again and again. We have to remember that that word hope is not like worldly hope. Hope, that we use that word uh, loosely in the world, and it doesn't mean anything. It's just, you know, it really means, you know, based on nothing except what we would like to see. I uh, hope it doesn't rain tomorrow. You know, that's, that's just leaving it up to what tomorrow brings. But Bible hope, we, we found out over, you know, over time and just living as a Christian, that Bible hope is, is a earnest expectation or confident expectation of good, right? So, so it says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. The New King James says of our hope, but let us hold fast. We got to, so we have not, we have not taken, we have not seized. Let's look at verse 23 again. So let us seize, seize. You know, I, I thought about how, you know, they'll show videos of how, you know, the, the FBI seized people's houses, right? They seized their stuff. They went and, what's that mean? They went, they went in and they took it. They took that person's stuff. They took that person's house. So let us seize and hold fast. So once we seize it, once we believe that we've, that we've taken something, believe that we receive means let us believe that we take it. We have to take it ahead of time. We take it so that we can see it. We don't, we don't seize something. Faith is not talking about, the Bible says, what do we need faith for if we already see something, right? So we have to take it by faith before we see it in the natural realm. So if we've seized something, only then, then and only then can we hold fast to it because it's in our possession. As far as we're concerned, if the Bible says that by Jesus stripes, I am healed. If the Bible says that he's forgiven us of all our iniquities and healed us of all our diseases, that means that's, that's what it means, right? So we, so we hold fast to the promise. Let me read that again. In, uh, verse 1023 amplifies. So let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering, without shifting. We don't need to be shifting in our belief. No, faith means that we already took it. If we already took it, nobody can come take, nobody can come take what is already yours, right? Because you, you're holding fast to it. You're holding on to it uh, for, as they say, for dear life, but you're holding on to something that you're believing God for. And, and it says, without wavering, how many times do we waver? How many times do we change our mind? Oh, I'm believing God for this. Oh, you know, then something happens. Then we, we're going to look at that. And then, you know, then we'll go back to, oh, okay. You know, then we, we get over that little 
thing, and then we say, oh, okay, okay, I I'm good, I'm good. And then something else, we're faced with something else that causes us to doubt, right? But look, as long as we took it, there's nothing else to look at. If it's ours, if, if we already possess it in the spirit realm by faith, which faith allows us to do, faith is the uh, evidence of things not seen. So our faith, the, the ability to live in co full confidence and trust in God's promises, uh, our faith, our belief is the substance. Our faith is the basis for what we're, be for what we're believing. It's the, uh, it's the uh, proof of our faith is the proof of what we have already possessed by faith, if, if I can say it that way. It says, and without wavering, the hope we cherish and confess and acknowledgement of it, for he who promised is reliable. For he who promised is sure and faithful to his word. I had um, shared last week. So, so we see there one of the reasons why we, we haven't, receive what we're believing for is we haven't really, we really have not taken possession of it. We have not seized it. If you haven't seized it, there's nothing to hold on to, right? When, when you seize the promise of God, when you're holding on to it, you're holding on to that thing for dear life, uh, so to speak, and it's yours. And it's up to us. It's up to anybody, even in this world to protect what is ours, right? So we see, so, so we see there. So no, so one of the reasons why we're not, we haven't uh, received what we believe is because we never really took possession of the promise. We never, we never really took possession. Okay. Uh, another thing that would um, keep us from, from receiving what we're believing for. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 32. Now, I want to use the, the uh, example when Pastor Lamont and I were believing God for children, okay? And I share with you, that was just one of those things, you know, like it, we were both believing for children, but I took it upon myself to take it more personal than him because he's, he, you know, men get their identity. He was taking care of the ministry, right? But so I made it my business to... Um, to take on the project of believing God for our children, for all, our offspring. Uh, Hebrews 10, 32, listen to this. It says, it says, but be, this is the amplified, but be ever mindful of the days gone by in which after you were first spiritually enlightened, the, the King James Version says, after you were illuminated, this is okay. So, all right, let's act like, all right, we have, we're holding fast. We have taken possession of the promise. We're, we're, we're sticking to it and nothing and nobody's going to tell us that it's not ours, that it doesn't belong to us by faith. But there are times, look at this, but be ever mindful of the days gone by in which after you were first spiritually enlightened, you endured a great and painful struggle, okay? So uh, another thing that will can keep us from receiving what we're believing God for is because we have to realize, now I talked about how the word of God, God's thoughts have to become our thoughts. God's ways have to become our ways, right? And, um, and so when... Uh, the scripture talks about being illuminated, that we have to remember from, from times past where we believe God. We have to, in order for a promise to become ours, we have to take the scriptures. We have to decide God's word is God's word, and that's it. That's the final authority. And so, but we have to, we have to take those scriptures. We have to meditate on them, right? We have to allow as we med meditate on scriptures as we meditate on promises the promises of God we have to allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten us now what happens now when when we when Dr. Lamont and I were having problems having children 
I began to meditate on uh, Psalm 127 and 3, that lo, children are heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Now, I finally, after I meditated on that scripture, you start off confessing the scripture. Come on, y'all know. You start off confessing the scripture. You, you start off confessing it over and over again. Remember we talked about uh, confession. When we start off uh, reciting scripture, that's different than our profession of faith. Uh, our profession expresses our possession, okay? Confession or our, us just repeating the scripture, that's a good start, but it's not enough. So we have to allow, we have to meditate on the word, right? So that the Holy Spirit can come and shine a light. You know, if you've ever been caught in a power failure and then you have your flashlight and then you're in the dark and you're looking for something, you're looking for the receptacle, you're looking for another flashlight, right? Um, you're looking for your keys. You're looking, you're looking in the dark and all of a sudden the flashlight shines on what it is that you're looking for. Well, that's what the Holy Spirit does as we meditate on the Word of God. All of a sudden, as they say, the Holy Spirit shines a light on the Scripture, on the promise that we've been looking at, that we've been uh, uh, confessing until, and then when the Holy Spirit comes and He shines a light on that Scripture, you say, "What? Well, there you go. That is mine. And so when I read Psalm 127, and verse three, that children were heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb was his reward. It was God's reward. Who am I? <laughs> who am I to prevent God? Who am I to prevent God from blessing me, for rewarding me through my womb, right? So the Holy Spirit shone a light on that scripture and it became alive to me, and then it became mine. Then it became my profession of faith. I latched onto that scripture, which caused me to latch onto a child, right? And then, uh, then the whole thing opened up to me, that whole blessing of children, bearing children opened up to me. But then I explained to you that once we proceeded, um, to have children, uh, then we had complications. So this scripture in Hebrews 10, 23, it, it, it warns us, it forewarns us that once we've been illuminated, once the scriptures, once the promise has been shown to us by the Holy Spirit through meditation, right? Uh, and, and thinking about the word day and night, like he told, like God told Joshua. And then that was the way he was going to make his way prosperous. But, but over time, we have to remember that, that we have an enemy, right? And that enemy will try to come after through circumstances and, and roadblocks. Uh, once we've been illuminated, things can start to happen. He says, be ever mindful of the days gone by in which after you were spiritually enlightened, you endured a great and painful struggle. So as we're believing God, all right, we've taken possession. We've, we've laid hold of it, right? We now have a profession of our faith. We're telling people what we're believing God for. We're telling people what's ours by faith in the word of God, right? But that doesn't mean that we're not going to be faced with something that's contrary, that speaks against what we're believing God for, even after we've been illuminated and 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 ha have been walking and uh, walking uh, as if it was ours, as if that promise was ours. Amen. So so sometimes we don't we're not we haven't received yet what we're believing God for because we realize that we really haven't taken possession of it by faith. We're not just mimicking people. We're not uh, parrots. You know, we're, we're called to speak words of faith that come from the heart. Remember, profession is, is something that comes from the heart. 
And when it's in the heart, when it's rooted in the heart, then when we speak words, there's going to be power behind our words because it's coming from the right place, not coming from up here. It starts here to memorize a scripture and to memorize a promise, but it's got to come from the heart. And the heart, the faith that comes from the heart, the belief that comes from the heart is what brings that promise to pass. So it could be, so it could be that that things that things happen that we endure uh the amplified says painful struggles so things are going to come at us right to try to take away our faith to try to take away our profession of faith to try to get us to stop holding fast to it and to let it go so we have to after we've been illuminated after the holy spirit has an has enlightened us with that promise that we're believing God for. Okay, so, and then we we face a struggle. We got to hold on. The word, it is what it is, right? No matter what we have to, uh, what hurdles we have to uh, uh, overcome in, in, our, in our receiving of the promise, okay? So we have to realize, no, I need to really receive it, which means I need to take it. I need to take it. It's mine. We need to make it personal, right? We need to make it our present possession and nothing, no thing. So when I was believing God for children, it didn't matter what my body was doing. It didn't matter what the doctor's report said. It did not matter. I was already illuminated. I had to go back. When, when something contrary happened, I, since I had already, since I was holding fast to that baby, nothing could keep me from it, right? So that's, that's, that's just the way it is. That's the way it is. Now, another possibility is that uh, Philippians 4, 6, or let me, let me, um, and I, I, I wanted to put this. Let's look at Psalm 37 and 4. Now, Psalm 37 and 4, it says, I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. Psalm 34, it's uh, in the King James Version, it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring this up is maybe something that we're believing God for is vague. I share with you that I'm believing God to get married. Well, there's no scripture and verse that really says that I'm going to get married or that I should get married. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Not specifically. Um, so, but then there's something else that we can believe God for. Psalm 34, uh, 37 and verse 4. Let's read that. Psalm 37 and verse 4. And this is the Passion Translation. And it says, keep trusting. Actually, that's verse 3, but this is good too. Keep trusting in the Lord and do what is right in his eyes. Fix your heart on the promises of God and you will be secure. Feasting on his faithfulness. Verse 4, make God the utmost delight and pleasure of your life. Okay? Make God the utmost delight delight and pleasure of your life and he will provide for you what you desire the most so let's say there is no specific promise you know again like like getting married i mean we could say uh he that finds a wife finds a good thing and then it's up to us ladies to make sure that we are we are purposing to be a good thing otherwise we can't claim that scripture either uh, so, but so we have to make sure that we are going to stay, be a good thing, stay a good thing, and so by time, so, so that somebody can come and find us, okay. Um, but when there's no specific, like, Lord, what town should I live in? Lord, where should we go on vacation? You know, different things like that, where there is no specific scripture and verse, amen. But we still have something else that we can look at, which is if we delight ourselves in the Lord, he'll give us the desires of our heart. Now that word desires, it means, it means, uh, let me, let me, instead of me, um, uh, stuttering, let me just read what I put. 
So um, a desire means, uh, come on, Connie. A desire, desire. I know it's here. I know it's here. A desire. Here we go. It's the uh, Hebrew word mishalo from the word shalau. And it means to ask for as a favor. <laughs> God will give you the desires of your heart. So that the word desire, it means to ask for as a favor. It means to make a request. It means a longing. It means the thing that I long for. And it means a petition. Okay. So, so if we don't find specific verses, look, if we live for God, God said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it will be done for you. Right. And so that's pretty simple. Let me make sure I quoted that correctly. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire. This is a new King James version. You will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Now we could look at it this way. Look, if we know that we are abiding in Christ, if we know that we are doing everything we know to live for God, to please God, right? That we're obedient to him. Uh, in our lives, then God, Jesus is saying here, if you abide in me, Paul said, my life is hid in Christ. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will. And uh, the King James, New King James says, you can ask what you desire. So we have to, we can, so God, we can receive the promise of God or believe what we're, what, uh, receive what we believe by simply having a desire, right? So you have to desire to, um, you have to desire, go to God with your desire, go to God with your desire to be married. I know one of the things I, I, I desire, something I keep on the back burner, but I would love to own an ocean front house. I think that would just be like the ultimate <laughs> place to live is to live in a house that's, you know, high up above the, above the sand, uh, where the, the waves can't crash against your house, damage your house, but you can hear the waves. Anyway, that's, that's one of my things. Uh, but you know, but I'm still in the process of making excuses for that. Just like I make excuses for not being married, just like I made excuse for, uh, uh, being married, just like I made excuses when I was believing God for children, I made an excuse of, you know, maybe I'm uh, too old to have children. Maybe I won't make a good mother. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have children because it will interfere with the ministry. God help me. Bless her, Lord. You know, different things like that. So, so we have to stop making up excuses. We don't receive what we think we're believing for because we keep making excuses. We keep wavering, right? We're, we've been, we can be double-minded, but again, let me go back to it. Sometimes you don't find scripture and verse for what you want from God, right? But, but God, the scripture says that if you delight yourself also in the Lord, he doesn't mind us delighting in other, other things in life, but not more than him. And it says that he'll give you the desires of your heart. Now, I think that goes two ways. Because um, we, can, we can have our own desire. And then I also believe, let's say, let's say since I'm, I'm, you know, let's say somebody decides, maybe you decided, you already decided, I ain't never getting married, you know, or I'm never remarrying. And then all of a sudden, one day you realize, you know what, I, I believe I do want to get married because so, so God can also put a desire in your heart because he knows your, the plans for your life. He, know, he knows that there's a woman somewhere or a man somewhere who would, who would compliment your life, compliment your calling, compliment your purpose to change your family, to change your nation, right? Uh, to change the kingdom. So, so that can go both ways. 
but I, I really want to focus on you having a desire in your heart and you making that request to God, right? Because you don't find anything specific. But if you're abiding in him and his words are abiding in you, he said, you can ask what you will, you know? So what are we going to, most of us, if we live a life that's pleasing to God, right? Then we're not going, we're not likely to ask for something that's crazy, something that's going to hurt us, something that's going to cause us to go in another direction, to walk away from God. That's not likely. I'm not saying that it's not possible, but it's not likely because we just, we love God and we love pleasing him and serving him and worshiping him and uh, all those things. And it's like, you know, God could be saying, that's my kid. That's my kid. I'm going to give her, I'm going to give him what she's asking for, right? Uh, because he's a, a loving father. And, and we have a relationship with him. But there's one more thing I want to talk about or one more scripture I want to share. And that's Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. It says, um, let me see. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. I'm going to read um, in the Amplified Version. Uh, verse 6, Philippians 4, 6. So we can ask God. So we perhaps we're not believing, we're not receiving what we're believing God for uh, because we haven't found verse in Scripture. So it makes us wishy-washy, right? So we're going to have to make up our minds what we desire so we can be stable and then ask God for it, request it from God, and then we, we wait. And then we wait until we see uh, the desires of our heart come to pass. But there, one more thing that could hold us back, Philippians 4, verse 6 in the Amplified, it says, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, and it has an in the Amplified version, in um, parenthesis, it says, by prayer and petition, definite requests. With thanksgiving, I love that, because with thanksgiving, that's assuming that what we're requesting, we're thanking God for it already, because we've already taken it. You don't thank somebody for something that they haven't done, right, or that they haven't promised to do for us. So, uh, to but the, the point I want to focus on right now is the fact that it says definite requests. Another uh, version says specific requests. OK, so we haven't sometimes we don't receive what we're believing for because we're not specific. You know, like suppose our kid came to us and said, um, hey, mommy, hey, daddy, I want a bike. And then they just walk away. Well, what kind of bike do you want? Two wheels, four wheels. You want red. You want green. You want it to have a bell. You want it to have a basket. Right, you want it to be electric, or you want it to be a regular old-fashioned bike, and so the child wasn't specific. So you don't know what to go buy, and if you did go buy something, it's very likely that you're going to bring the bike back to the child, and they're going to say, "Oh no, it doesn't have this. It it's it's the wrong color. I didn't want this kind." Well, it's because you weren't specific, baby. I just got you what what I thought you should have. So God expects us to be specific. I want to share this story uh, with you. Uh, I just heard recently, you know, I, these videos pop up on my on my cell phone, and and this uh, woman uh, popped up, uh, an actress. She's a famous actress. I can't think of her name, but she was being interviewed, and I guess the person asked her, uh, you know, how does she meet her husband? So she proceeded to tell the story. She said um, she was talking to a friend and her friend, you know, probably asked her, I'm just guessing because it was a clip, a video clip. And her friend said, well, have you ever thought about praying for a husband? And she said, no, I never thought about praying for a husband because uh, she said, because I thought God would just look at me and say, who are you? 
you know, because she doesn't, you know, she's an actress. She's busy doing stuff, act, actor, as they, that's supposed to be proper. Everybody's an actor, male and female. And so, so, and the lady encouraged her to go pray. So she went home and she prayed. She, and she told her, to, the, her friend told her to be specific about what she prayed. So she went home. She prayed, she prayed that he would be a, a, a football player or an ex-football player, that he would be tall, that he would have mutual hobbies, the same hobbies as her, common interests as her. And I can't think of all the things that she, that she asked for. And then she said, three weeks later, come on, y'all, three weeks later. Look, we go to church every week, right? <laughs> We're believing God for this thing and that. Thing. We're praying all the time. Three weeks, and this mo woman meets her future husband. Guess what? He's a football player. He's tall. He has common. He has the. He had the same interests as her. Now I don't know how long this, ago this was, and I'm not sure if she's still married. <laughs> but my point is, three weeks later, because she was specific, and I can almost guarantee you. Because she's busy as an actress, I can almost guarantee you she was not going to God every day for three three weeks. God, I hope you heard me. God, I, uh, you know, God, uh, send this man to me. It's not. I, I bet you. I bet you she wasn't freaking out and um, and and giving her prayer a whole lot of thought. But she was specific, and then she left it. She, she left it. She, she, you know, she, she might've been thanking God for her husband every day. I don't know, but come on y'all. Three weeks later, she got the husband that she was specific about. So my point today is that perhaps we have not received what we're believing God for because we have not been specific. God wants us to be specific He's just like us as a parent. Well, what do you want, son? What do you want, daughter? Do, what do you want them to look like, right? Um, uh, uh, what do you do? You want them to love me or not love me? Do you want them to be this or that? Do you want them to be a businessman? Do you want them to be a preacher? You know, different things like that. Just being specific. Do you want him to? Uh, I don't know, have an accent. I don't know. Do you want them to have a family? Do you want them to like to travel? You know, different things like that. So being specific. So we need to, so number one, we, in order to uh, receive what we're believing God for, we need to make sure that we've taken it, that we've already taken possession of it by faith, right? And then we need to remember and make sure when, when, when the Holy Spirit has illuminated and, and, uh, shown the light or uh, shine, I don't know which one's proper English, shine the light on the scripture and it becomes ours. That thing becomes ours. We have to make sure and remember that when we go through different struggles, that that does not mean that the promise uh, does not belong to us. It just means that we're going to have to get over a hurdle. So let's not back up. Let's not, once God, once the Holy Spirit shine the light on, that's what we look at. We don't look at the darkness. We don't look at the doctor's report. We don't listen to what other people are saying. We don't consider the fact that people are laughing at us, saying, ha, 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 girl, you never getting that. So we, so we, have, to, we have to stick to our guns. We're holding fast to our profession of faith without wavering. And then, uh, or, or we're, not, we're not asking God for desire because we haven't found a scripture that applies to what we want, Right? So we, we bring God our desires because he loves us. And then lastly, when we do take things to God because we don't have a scripture, which a scripture usually has specifics, right? But if it's a desire, then we got to tack on our specifics about that. So when God sends us, when he answers our prayers, when he gives us the desires of our heart, we know exactly that God did it and that this is from God this is God answering my prayer, and I, uh, I believe that I receive it, and I believe that I'll take it in the natural, amen, after we've already taken it in the spiritual. All right, everybody, I hope you uh, 
heard something that you could use. Amen. In this great walk of faith that we're in, amen. And God's got great things in store for all of us. All right, everybody, if I don't see you by next week, have a happy Thanksgiving, a happy, blessed, and, and safe Thanksgiving. All right, everybody, I love you. See you. Bye.